Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be creating a website slash application using ChatGPT alone. Now I'm a software developer by profession and I create web applications and work with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Now with all this fear around us losing our jobs in the future to AI because we're going to be made redundant, as apparently AI can do everything that we can do and more, I wanted to put this to the test myself and see if I could use ChatGPT to create an application from scratch with as little help as possible. So throughout this video I'm going to be detailing exactly what prompts I put into ChatGPT, the responses that it gave back to me and what I did with those responses in order to get the different outputs that came out of it stick around and watch to the end to see if it was successful in creating an application and if it was how good of an application it actually was so let's get started and i'll tell you about how i sent into chat gpt's dms Write an application for me using React, TypeScript and Tailwind CSS that is beautifully designed with vibrant colors. It will be a website for a cleaning business that allows the user to select a location, date and time as well as the amount of rooms they need cleaning. The user will then be able to make a booking by entering in their personal details. You should use relevant images to display around the website and provide a how it works section and also an about us section. Please provide all the code required as well as all the files in the project. It replied by saying that as an AI text based model it cannot create the complete project with all the files and images but what it can do is give me an outline and guidance and provide me code snippets on how to build the entire project including how to get the project started uh, which components to create and some resources that I can use to complete the project so step by step I wanted to follow exactly what it told me to do so I started off by copying the code for creating the project and then going over to Visual Studio Code where I then just pasted this in this created an app for me using the create react app script with the name cleaning app and using the typescript template it also did a cd into the application that i just created however i want to just go ahead and open this up myself so i can have it in the root folder in my visual studio code then back to ChatGPT to get the snippet of code i needed to install tailwind css and now that's installed let's go to the package.json file we can see that it's installed there so let's go ahead and run our application and as we can see, it successfully loads up our app on localhost 3000. So the next step is uh, for us to go to this installation guide and create the configuration files. However, I don't want to look through this documentation. I just want to know what I need to do. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT exactly what I need to do in order to set up these files. ChatGPT then responds with a bunch of steps that I need to follow in order to set up Tailwind CSS properly on my application. And we'll go through these one by one with the first step being to run npx tailwind css so i'll go ahead and run that in the application and as you can see that's created a tailwind.config.js file and the second step is that we copy this and replace our file with it and i'll go ahead and do that save it now it's telling me to create a file called postcss.config.js so I'll go ahead and create that file and replace the contents with this. Step four, create a new file called index.css and import these three things. First mistake from ChatGPT is that we already have an index.css file, but we import these in here anyway. And let's move on to step five, which is actually just updating the app.tsx file with the index.css import well as we can see we've already got that so we don't need to do that the next thing i asked was can you write the header component for me i wanted to have a space for the logo some navigational links that when clicked will scroll to the correct section of the page and a sign in button it told me to first create a new folder called components in the source folder and inside the components folder to create a file named header tsx which i should add the following code into so i create a new folder called components then added a new file called header.tsx Copy the code over, pasted it in the file. So let's have a quick look at the code and what it's doing. We've got a callback function called scroll to section, which is in this handle navigation click function. We've got some HTML here, an image uh, which takes in a path, a H1 for a cleaning business, a uh, two buttons which calls this handle navigation click and a sign in button which does nothing. This looks like a really solid start. So let's see what else it tells us to do next. As we can see, it's telling us to replace the image path with the actual path of our logo, as well as updating the app.tsx file to import the header component and include it into the JSX. So this is what the app.tsx file should now look like. As you can see, we've now got this scroll to section callback, which is passed into the header. 
and you can see it does some sort of scroll into view behavior on those elements. So let's go ahead and copy that code and replace our app.tsx file with a new code. And if I go ahead and save that, we can go and look at the app. And you can see now it's starting to look like something. We've got the buttons on there, uh, but it doesn't really look quite like we want it. And we're missing the logo. So I'm just going to grab my really special logo really quick. So here's my logo and I'm putting it inside the public folder of the repository. I'm just going to rename this to logo.png and just replace the source of the image to logo.png. And if I save that, I want to see this on the website. So I can see the image loading up. However, the header isn't really styling as I expected to. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT another question. I want the header component to be stuck to the top, have a horizontal alignment, and the link should be styled. The logo should also be smaller to fit the top bar size. ChatGPT comes back with a response, making changes to its original code and aligning exactly what changes it's made. So of course, I go ahead and copy this code and paste it into my file. And after saving this, I'm expecting the problems to have gone away. At this point, I realized that I need to replace the logo again. But this hasn't really fixed it at all. And my next guess is that maybe I need to stop the app and start running it again to maybe see those Tailwind CSS changes show up. Unfortunately, I didn't see these changes happening immediately. And I actually should have probably waited impatiently for uh, the app to actually start running because it does take some time to kick off. But at this point, I'm just searching to see if I've missed anything, any instructions that ChatGPT has told me. I end up going through the project and um, cleaning up some things, but I think this is just the application actually starting running again, which fixes it. And boom, just like that, we've got the start of our website. We've got this top part and it's blue. We've got these two navigational links and a signing button at the end. And also we've got this logo and this header picking it up. The buttons are not doing anything at the moment, even when I click them but it's a good start. Okay, so on to the next prompt. Great, can you now please create the location picker component with an autocomplete input that uses an appropriate API to load the address based on the postcode entered by the user? Once the user selects the postcode, the component should display further information about the postcode. I want this component to be placed in a hero section of the website where I will later then put the other components to allow the user to make a booking. So it starts to respond to me telling me to install the React Places package so that I can use this in my application. And as it's writing out the code, it eventually gets to a point where it just randomly stops and then I have to manually tell it to continue in order for it to complete its answer. It then continues to write out the code, but seems to misformat it as it's probably keeping its state from the previous message. And as you can see, the code is coming out as normal text. And then when it ends up trying to write text at the end, it ends up putting it inside a code formatter. So to install the package, I copy the bash script and go into a new terminal and paste it in there, which installs the package pretty quickly. The next step tells me to create a new component called locationpicker.tsx and paste the code into there. I noticed that there's an error in this file and I go to take a look at it. I could take this error and paste it into ChatGPT and I'm sure it'll give me the answer, but I know I'm just missing the types for this package. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install that. And once it was installed, all the errors went away. So take a quick look at this uh, code. It has a callback with unlocation select, which takes in all these parameters. It has an address state, as well as a handle change for setting that address. And we have a handle select function, which sets the address and makes a call to geocode by address to get some additional information and then gets the latitude and longitude and calls the on location select callback. This is wrapped in try catch in case anything goes wrong as we are making API calls at this point. We can see that in the JSX, we've got this places autocomplete component and some additional code to render an input as well as a loading and some suggestions. Builders of analysis can often take some time to research and figure out before you can actually do it. The fact that we did this so quickly is pretty impressive. Going back to the chart, it tells me to replace your Google Maps API key here with your actual Google Maps API key, but I couldn't see any mention of this anywhere. So I have a quick skim through the messages again to see if I've missed something. Without any luck in finding it, I then move on to Updating the add.tsx file with a new code that's being generated for it. We can see that now we've also got a um, selected location added in as one of the state variables. However, half the code is missing because I had to tell 
chat GPT to continue. So I'll just go ahead and copy that code from the second half of the message and paste that back into the application. And because of the formatting, I had to fix it up a little bit and uncomment some lines so that it would work appropriately. So then I'm going to try and see what the app is looking like now. And I refresh the page. I can see that I've got a white screen. So I inspect the page to see if I've got any errors. And I can see I've got an error that says Google Maps JavaScript API library must be loaded. So straight away, this looks to me like it's related to the API key that we haven't set up. So instead of searching this up on Google, I decided to just take this error message and go into ChatGPT and explain to ChatGPT that you asked me to replace this API key with my actual Google Maps API key, but there was no reference to that in the code that you provided. I believe that in result of this, I have received this error message from the console, and then I copy and paste this error message directly into ChatGPT. Followed by saying, please tell me where I should be loading this and how I can do this. I would also appreciate a step-by-step -step guide on how to get a Google Maps API key. ChatGPT then produces a step-by-step -step guide of exactly what I need to do to set up this Google Maps JavaScript API library in my application. And the first step is to copy this snippet of code and put it into our index.html file. And here we can see where we're supposed to replace your Google Maps API key with. Step one. Go to the Google Cloud Console. Step two, log in with your Google Cloud account. However, I'm already logged in, so we can skip that one. Step three, click on the project drop down and select or create a new project that you want to use for your API key. So I'm going to click on new project and then give my project a name and click create. Then it loads for a bit whilst it's creating the project. But once it's done, I can then select that project. Step four, open the side menu by clicking on the menu button in the top left corner and then navigate to the API and services dashboard. Step five, click on the plus enable APIs and services button at the top of the page. Step six, in the search bar type maps JavaScript API and select it from the results. Step seven, click on enable button to enable the maps JavaScript API in your project. Now, when I did this, I ran into a bit of an issue because I have already gone over the trial limit for my account. And then I had to set up a billing account on this account to continue using Google services. So I just followed the steps to complete setting up my billing. And then afterwards, I tried to access Maps JavaScript API again. And it asked me to select which billing account I wanted to use. And then it prompted me with some questions, some very basic questions. So I just filled these in. After which, it just gave me the API key right there and then, without me having to do any of the other steps that uh, ChatGPT asked me to do. So I just copied the API key that I needed from here and pasted it back in my code. And voila, we have a location input. We can see here that we've got a title saying book a cleaning service and an input with a placeholder saying enter your postcode. And if I start typing into this input, you can see that results start showing up beneath it. And now if I go ahead and select one of those results, we can see that this displays additional information about the location I've selected, which is exactly what we wanted. However, one thing about it that I didn't like was the styling of this dropdown. As you can see, it doesn't really match the styling of the input that we have. So what I'm going to do is ask ChatGPT to update this for me. That worked. Now, could you give me an updated snippet of the suggestion section from the location picker component so that it matches the width and feel of the input? I want it to look like it's one component. ChatGPT then responds with an updated snippet of the code and explains to me exactly what styling is applied so that it can achieve the look and feel that I'm going for. And now with the updated piece of code, we can see that the drop down looks a lot nicer and matches the width of the input. And it's even added a cursor to when we hover over the suggestions. So I'm much happier with this. Okay, let's pause right there. Before we carry on, I need to just make you guys aware that at this point, I was very pleased with myself and the progress that I had made with my little friend ChatGPT. So I decided to take a break. However, when I came back from my break, due to the enormous size of my hands, I completely fat fingered recording this video and I ended up recording over an hour's worth of footage on a blank screen. Yes, I didn't realize that my recording software had been locked onto my lock screen and it wasn't recording anything that I was doing. So what I actually had to do was backtrack a bit and undo a lot of the changes that I had made. Just wanted to make you guys aware. Let's continue. That looks great. Can you please provide me the code for the date? And once again, the fat fingeredness continues. I hit enter before I was able to even finish the message. 
However, it was still able to understand my request and it gave me some instructions on how to create this component, which started by installing some packages and then creating these components. However, as I was writing out the instructions, once I was writing out the app.tsx code, it came to a halt. So I installed the packages and created the date picker component. And then I said, the app.tsx file seems to be getting quite large. Could we move some of this code into separate components? And it told me to create a booking form component and copy and paste this code into it. And so I did. The booking form component had the date state within it. And it also had the header, the location picker and the date picker move inside this component. It also told me to create a location info component to house the additional information about the location. And finally, after having to tell it to restart the last snippet, it gave me an updated code for the app.tsx file also, which looked like this. Just ignore the how it works for now. Back in the app, we can see that our location picker is still working. And we've also got a working date picker. However, I don't really like the styling of this as it doesn't match our application. So then I asked ChatGPT to provide me with some styling to match the theme of the application. And it told me to create this date picker.css file, which is actually really good because something like this would have taken me ages to do by myself because I'd have to look this up and understand how this third party component works and how I might be able to style it. And now back in the app, we can see that it's been styled with a blue color. It's still not perfect. And I could ask ChatGPT for some more prompts, but I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. Can you please provide me the code for the time picker with appropriate styling also? Install some libraries, create a new component, add some styling, update the booking, the TSX file, yada, yada, yada. We're basically experts at this now. We did have a little bit of an issue where the typing wasn't exactly correct. I needed to add a all null to the type of the selected time in certain areas. Our code was then compiling fine. However, when we went to the app, the component wasn't actually working. It didn't have a background. It had these properties, but um, nothing was showing up inside the dialogue. So I complained about this to ChatGPT and it actually asked me to, to implement a different library for this component, which also ended up having some typing issues. And this one I had to just figure out on my own as ChatGPT wasn't really being helpful. So I had to make these changes in order for it to work. And then like magic, we had a working time selection component. Please generate the code for the room counter component. And a room counter component you shall have. Wow, thanks ChatGPT, that looks really cool. And uh, everything seems to work as I expected to. This is looking really good. Could you rearrange the inputs on the booking form to be in two columns? Yes, update the booking form.exec to use the flex utility from Tailwind CSS. Perfect, that looks a lot better now. Now I need a way to take the user's details and submit this form. Could you create the personal details form as a separate component? And when the user has finished filling in their location, date and time and amount of rooms, they can click on a book now button, which will have a slide animation on the booking form to hide it and show the personal details form. At the end of the personal details form, there should be a submit button. Sure thing, mama, 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 mom, do, 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 do. Okay, it didn't actually say that, but it did fail the first time and I had to ask it to regenerate the response. Create a file called personal details form and use this content. Then install the React transition group library and then amend the contents of the app TSX file to add in the animation and functionality to switch between the two views. Okay, okay, don't stop there. Please continue. Create a file called Booking Form Transition CSS inside the source folder and add this code. Then update the app TSX file to import this file. Amazing stuff. So now if I could click on Book Now, we can see that there's a slide animation which then shows that personal details form. Please complete the personal details form to have the appropriate form fields in the same styling and pattern as a booking form. I'm sure you know how this works now. Yes, yes, of course. So now we can see it's added in these fields and if we refresh the page and click on book now, it has a sliding animation and then shows us the form. Since we don't have a backend service, we're not gonna try and hook this up with any API calls or anything like that. But just building the front end, we can see that it's done a pretty good job at creating the booking form as well as a form for taking in some users details. So now I think we can move on to creating some of the other components for the website. Could you please create the how it works section and generate the text appropriately to let them know that after they have submitted, we will review their booking and send them a confirmation email within 24 hours. So it did provide us with a how it works section. However, this wasn't exactly what I had in mind and there were a few things still missing from it. 
I was hoping it would remember the navigation from the header component. However, as you can see, it doesn't really work. It didn't add in any functionality to make this work. And the how it works actually is just a bit bland and boring. I was hoping it would look something a bit more like this. So I went back to ChatGPT and said, the navigation link doesn't work for the how it works section. Also, could you style the section so that it has each step in one row with each one having an image on top of the text to represent what to do? At this point, it kind of felt like ChatGPT had amnesia and it forgotten the initial function that it wrote in order for us to do the scrolling. And I actually preferred that because it had this scrolling to view with the behavior smooth on it. So I think that's just gonna be a bit nicer for us. So instead of listening to ChatGPT at this point, I decided instead of changing it to an A tag, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then just add in the ID into the section of how it works. And that's it really. And the navigation started working. It also provided the new code for the how it works section, which after copy and pasting it over, looks pretty close to what we need. All we need left to do is to add some images in there. After downloading some free images, I dragged them into my public folder and then updated the image source for each of those image tags to point to the right image. And we can see that it worked. However, the images are quite large and there's not enough padding in between them. So we should do something about that. Could you add some more padding between the top and bottom of this section and also make the images smaller and have a decent padding between them? Well, certainly, sir. All you need to do is add some padding. But since you had to ask, here's the updated code. All right. So here, what I need to do was update the class names and update the padding on the main container. And then it looked a lot better. I would say this looks a lot more like what I had in mind. So I'm pleased with that. Great. Can you create the about us page with some information about two brothers who started this business and want to provide the best possible service in London and take each job very seriously to a high level of detail? There should be two sections with images of the brothers and some background information on them. You can make up some likes, interests and hobbies about them. The usual create a file and copy the contents over. However, during this, I did notice that it was using a different naming convention for the URLs of these sections. And I think this is more accurate to what it should be compared to what we've been doing. So I decided to just update these as well. And just like that, the about us section was born. It's got some information there, so I don't have to think about that as well. And it looks pretty decent. All that's left is to add some images there. I added some more free images from Google, put them into the public folder, update the source for the images. And just like that, the about us section looks pretty complete. Can you now please generate the code for the footer section? This component again was quite long, so I had to tell it to continue once again. But I added in the code for the footer section. And it also had the same issue with the formatting again. I was going to add this link to the index.html file. So I did. And also add the footer to the app.tsx file. And we can see that we now have a footer on the website as well. Which basically concludes all that we wanted to do with ChatGPT on this website. However, there were still a few little tweaks I wanted to do myself. Such as adding in a link for book now into the tab bar. And also updating the logo to a nicer one. I also realized that these social media icons were not showing up and in the console I could see that I was getting an error for this. So I told ChatGPT that the icons are not loading and I and that I get this error and it came back with two possible solutions. So I took the first one and replaced the link with this after which the error went away and I could see these icons being loaded. So this is pretty much the entire site. As we can see, we can search for a postcode. And this shows additional information at the bottom. We can choose a date. Uh, we can select a time for our slot. We can select the amount of rooms that we want to book in for this service. And then when we click on book now, it takes in our name and our last name and email and phone number. Uh, the submit doesn't really do anything. And we've also got these links which take us down here. So we've got how it works with text that was already filled in by ChatGPT. I didn't even have to up with these myself as well as an about us section followed by a footer section now although this isn't fully working this is still a very good starting point for me to start inserting my logic into this application but as it stands this is what we've created with chat gpt so what's my verdict Although the path wasn't a straight one, overall, I was very impressed by the outcome of this project. It amazed me how little effort and thinking was required on my part in order to build something like this in such a short amount of time. Do I think it's going to take over my job anytime soon? Probably not. As you saw throughout this video, there were several mistakes that ChatGPT made. And although I might have been able to keep prompting it to eventually get it to get to the result, I had no guarantee that it would actually eventually get there. So I think it would always be in my best interest to try and solve things like that myself. 
And I think even as this grows, even if it gets a lot better, we're still always going to need that human touch to finally check the work and make sure that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. But who knows, maybe I'll be proved wrong. And that being said, the development time was dramatically reduced by the use of ChatGPT. So I can definitely see this becoming a tool that's going to help developers in their day-to-day -day job. And as it's still early days, I'm going to keep an eye on this space and see how much better AI can actually get. If you'd like to follow me in this journey, or if you're interested in web development in general, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to give this video a like as it helps to push the video out so others can see it. And if you'd like me to make this a series and try to build other web applications with ChatGPT, or even try to complete this project and take it further by building a backend with its own database and API and having the front end integrate with that, then let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.